Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, uh, as we got together after the game, an important thing for uh, each of these guys to know is that they are an incredibly tough group. They built an extremely strong bond together this year. I'd say each and every one of them found a way to get better and push the envelope. I know there's a, a lot of broken hearts in there, but at the same time, uh, whether we won it all or did not, uh, tomorrow is going to be the same thing, work. And we got a handful of things, obviously, that we learned about ourselves this year. We had a lot of young guys, especially this guy next to me, that uh, jumped in and was a huge part uh, of this baseball family. And um, golly, I wish <clears throat> every guy was in here sitting down next to me because I'd like to uh, talk about each and every one of them and, and how remarkable they are and how much they've changed my life. Legend. <clears throat> um, you know, came up short, but there wasn't any lack of effort or attitude in what these guys were trying to do, and that was win it all. And so I'm, uh, I'm proud of them. I love them, and uh, I know they're, they're hurting right now pretty good, but I know they're going to respond because that's what they do. Okay, we'll go ahead and take questions for Travis and, and Gavin. Hey, for both of you guys, I guess when you look back maybe down the road at, at the last week or two weeks in this experience, what do you think you'll take away most, and, and how might it help the team moving forward next year? Uh, I think we're a bunch of fighters, and that's what this program is going to continue to breed. And a couple pitches went down. It's a strong team, but man, like the growth I saw from everybody this year had our ups and downs, but just continue to continue to pursue the game with confidence, and that's all we're going to take away is. Just keep doing that, and good things are coming. Yeah, I think it's uh, this past few weeks has been big time maturing for me, and I feel like a lot of the young guys um, coming into next year. I think we know a lot more what to expect, whereas a lot of us haven't been here before, and now we have a little bit of a bad taste in our mouths, and it makes us mad. So it's a it's some it's some fuel for the fire. Anyone else for the student house? Joe again. Uh, Trav, I noticed when, when uh, Brady came off, you kind of you know, shared a moment with him. I don't know if you can offer much about that, but just that moment, did you guys talk about anything or just kind of let it go? Yeah. Uh, Brady's my roommate. Um, just the growth I've seen from him, I, I just wanted to acknowledge him and pick him up. You know, being the last out is tough, and he's just had such a hell of a last couple of days and a hell of a season. I'm just happy for that guy, and I just wanted to make sure his chin stayed up. Any other questions for the student athletes, Joe? I guess just for both of you guys, what will you remember most about this season? Obviously, started slow and kind of had some highs and lows, but in the end, a pretty good one. Gavin, why don't you go first? Yeah, I'd just say the the connection that we built together as a team. Um, Coming from on and off the field is something that I never thought I could have somewhere. So seeing that throughout the whole season and how much each guy cares about one another is, is something that doesn't go unnoticed. Yeah, um, just continuing to learn about all the guys, learn how to be a, a better teammate, better person on and off the field, just trying to grow with one another. Um, and I know Gavin and I are going to come back really strong next year and and hopefully bring these guys that we've built relationships with all year with us and we're excited for the future and just keep going okay if there's not any other questions for the student athletes we'll go ahead and release those guys thank you gentlemen congratulations on a great year push in your chair okay we'll go with questions for coach right here in the front yeah, Mitch, how hard was it to, to try to find some arms? I mean, you used four guys today that you are used in this, in this tournament. I mean, trying to find arms to finish. 
Uh, no doubt we were down a few arms. We had a couple guys get banged up this year. Uh, Kamats and Hunter, two of our starters, so really only had uh, you know one of our weekend guys going at this point. But instead of getting down in the dumps about it, uh, it's out of our control really. And so what a great opportunity for our young guys to take the ball. What a great opportunity for other guys to get out there and compete. And we saw that from uh, Jimenez yesterday, how he handled six innings of work. <laughs> From getting the ball that many times, he, he felt more confident in that big environment that he can sink it down the zone. It's something we saw why, why we recruited him. He's got the attitude. He's got that makeup to go out there and compete. And he made some big strides. As, as we were in the, the clubhouse uh, debriefing after the game, it was fun to have each guy stand up and share gratitudes towards each and every one of them regardless of if they're pitchers or position players. At the first half of the season, our pitching really held us together. We were running a 3.14 ERA uh, through the first couple weeks uh, of pack play, and our offense hadn't got going yet, and we had four freshmen taking the ball consistently. And I know they want to come up big, and they had to put together a heavy workload, especially at the end without a couple starters in there, but Saw guys like A.J. Ladder. I mean, this morning we woke up and we knew we were going to have to play five games to win it all. After a doubleheader yesterday and a potential doubleheader today, when we were getting together before stretch, every single guy, including Jimenez, came over to me and said, I'm good to go today. Not, they didn't even tell me they were good for an inning. They all told me they were good to go, whatever it takes. And that's when you know you have a special group. And that feeds off of guys like Ben Ferrer, or Ryan Brown, or A.J. Lattery, those older guys that set an example of putting in work each and every day. And it, it's, it's no different. Those are the guys that are, are doing extra at practice, and they're doing extra when no one else is around. And they're taking care of the kitchen and the clubhouse and the dugouts. They're leading by example in all that they do. And that's why, even though we had a couple guys down, as, as frustrating as that can be, at the same time, there's no fret. We always talk about being foxhole guys and who are the guys that you want with you in there. And you look around the clubhouse, and they're going to find a way to get it done. Victor Quinn, guy who threw uh, that last inning for us, had a couple innings here. And really the whole first year he had struggled finding the strike zone. And this last month he had really made big strides. And it was guys continually pouring into him and him never giving up, trying to find a way to make it work. We had a handful of guys trying to make moves because they knew that opportunity was going to come up. We had a guy, Joey Munt, who was on roster this year but didn't get to throw an inning, was coming back off injury, and he had shared his story with other guys about his freshman year where he did not get out there and compete to his best, did not pitch for a long time because he did not do well, uh, and then he had opportunity late uh, in the season, in the postseason, and he said his biggest regret was that he didn't go out there and continue to train and get ready for that next opportunity. He said, well, I guess I wasn't going to play. And he learned a lot from that, and he wants to teach others about how to go about their work. Just because you may have fallen on your face once doesn't mean you're no good. It means it's time to wake, wake back up and go to work. So we look at it as a great opportunity, even down pitching. Won't use it as an excuse. Those are Those are – the guys we have, and we were excited at getting those 27 guys on the plane out here. Joe? Uh, Mitch, I know this is, is fresh today, but when you start to flip the page and move forward, you have so many guys coming back and so many key guys. How would you describe you know, the potential of this team next year? <laughs> when it comes to Oregon State baseball and this family and the tradition that's gone on there, from Jack and Case uh, running the ship, uh, and I know that that coaching staff in there cares so much about this Beaver family and how they put in the work, too. It wasn't just in that clubhouse sharing gratitude towards the players. I want those coaches to know undergrads, our SID, our athletic trainer, our strength coach, our analytics, everybody's an integral part of this, of this family. And I, I know that there's so many people that care deeply about it, and I know those guys like Bazana and Turley that were sitting up here on the stage next to me and those young arms. I'm excited. I'm excited because I know tomorrow morning we get on a plane and head back home. You can get distracted, but I know those guys aren't going to. They're going to want to go work. I, if I go by the field tomorrow, there's going to be guys hitting. There's going to be guys playing catch. 
there's going to be guys bringing out a machine and turning up the velo, and that's what makes me so I don't I, I don't worry at all. I don't lose sleep over it. You know, we may have a roster full of 18 to 22 year olds, and they're still growing up to be men. That's what they want to do, and we're going to continue to push for them because we owe it to them. I'm not concerned. I'm excited for the next opportunity. Anything else for Coach? Right here in the front. Yeah, Mitch, what makes uh, LSU so difficult to deal with? I mean, what's, what's different about them than the other teams you've played? Uh, they're a good ball club. I, honestly, I, I look at their lineup and I, I think a lot about our lineup. You know, the first two guys, it reminds me of Bazana and Forrester. Um, and as you go down the lineup, there's guys that can do damage. You know, we, we preach uh, a lot of zone control. Um, I think they do a lot of that as well. There's guys that are, are very competitive. One through nine, you got to be on point. And when we were successful, we were pitching down in the zone, just executing our game plan. When we were um, losing sight of that a little bit and maybe going to effort instead of, you know, conviction on that, that location, then it got us into trouble. But of course, they have a solid offense and, and uh, some pitch in depth as well. A couple, couple strong starters and guys out of the pen. But yeah, I, 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 we've always talked about all year, it doesn't matter if you're playing on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, the real guys show up all the time. And we're going to take any, any opponent as if they were all the best in the country. Because we always assume that every team is going to approach us like we're the best in the country. Um, you know. We, we know what our program brings. We know how tough we are. And so we know that everyone's going to bring their A game against us. And we got to make sure that we're doing that as well. Anything else? Coach, congratulations on a great year. Thanks for everything you did this week for us. Thank you, guys. Thank you.